Hi, welcome back to my channel, Antoinette here. It's monthly wrap up time and um, I apologise if it's a bit echoey in the room I'm in. We've managed to declutter a lot of the stuff from in here, so um, it's a bit empty. Right, um, without further ado, my moon diary from the Flickering Cauldron. This is my dailies, so let's go to um, the month of July. As always, the tabs, I have added the tabs for ease of finding for me. And this is my daily draws for my tarot practice. And you can see the lines means I missed out. Um, so I had a period, I think we had a pattern at the start of the year where I was missing lots and then I managed to get back on top and um, through no particular reason, suddenly I was completing and maybe only missing two. So uh, something, I don't know. I don't know what, but something <laughs> is happening again, quite clearly. Um, and for this one, we were starting in the Western Astrology Month of Cancer for July. And we had the fairy for this month, which is called Ilara. And we have some information about um, our Cancerian fairy and the colours in which um, they are representing. So we've got white, silver and grey. We have the gemstones. So we have the star sign gemstone here. So we have ruby. The modern gemstone here, they have ruby. And um, traditional gemstone, they have ruby um, for Cancer. For July, sorry, for June, it would have been Moonstone. And for July, I think it might still be Ruby. And maybe um, the other one I've seen for this is sometimes Tiger's Eye, actually. So just to bear in mind, I am aware um, that there are many other traditions, things that play into gemstones and their correspondences for months and why. So, um, yeah, so this one's obviously going for the star sign. And we have the, um, so for the mystical element, we have ruby. Ruby around. Oh, here we go. Look, planetary stone, moonstone. Um, that's interesting. So there we go. And for the talismanic stone, we have sapphire. Then we have a bit more here on the planetary, moon, uh, pla planetary stone of moonstone. We have the lark's spur for the birth flower for July. It's a beautiful flower. I don't know if it smells because my sense of smell is broken. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of red here. Um, basically, the short note here is everyone is crazy right now. Um, did anyone else get this at the start of July? Like people were off the walls with their speech, behavior, um, temper, uh, interactions thought process I mean like I thought I had gone to crazy town at some points and that included myself even I did not do it myself I wanted to stick myself in a naughty cupboard and not come out but that's no good because I got to go in there with me I didn't even want to be around me <laughs> so <laughs> so I've got like I think this um I completely forgot I'd done this but quite clearly here look like I've got like ah raw breathe calming, <laughs> starting to calm, got to be calm because I'm coming on call. Um, so just really curious behaviours again, um, feeling the energies around me. Um, I haven't really written the decks I was using, but I know it's swapped a few times with the decks I was using. Um, the energy just, I don't know, I just wanted to pull another deck, which is, sometimes I'll pull one, but I think in this case I used maybe four decks. Um, so that was an unusual thing for me to be doing. And what I was also doing is I was pulling an oracle a day as well. So sometimes you'll see there's some information at the bottom, which would have been what came off my oracle decks on the very bottom lines of these. Um, yeah, convenience store reflection chaos. So that was the oracle of place that I was pulling just to see, curious how they lended themselves to what happened in the day and the card that was being pulled. So um you can probably see there. Um, I lost my nan on Saturday, the 27th of July. Um, it was very sudden, wasn't expecting the phone call. I mean, yes, I knew she was ill and we knew she had vascular dementia and yada, yada, yada. But um, <laughs> she always has the last say and she was due to move into um, a nursing home on the 29th so two days away from moving into a nursing home because she could no longer live with my sister it was no longer practicable for her um, illness to be remaining in a home or at home being cared for 
regardless of how good we could get the care, it wasn't, it just wasn't enough for what she needed. Um, and at this point though, she'd had a two week really good period um, on the ball, laughing, chatting, uh, making jokes. She always told the filthiest jokes. Um, you know, so she was back to where, what we would call Nan. And um, she knew she was going to the care home. So she had been told that she was going, sorry, the nursing home. She had been told she was going to be going there and the explanation as to why and um, the fact that she'd be able to have convalescence and be surrounded by a few more people and have a bit more of a life, a social life, hopefully, than what we were able to provide for her now that she could no longer leave the house and go out and about. And she seemed relatively okay with that, but I guess... <laughs> She waited till we paid the deposits and then she had the last laugh. That's how I'm trying to see it. Although for me, it's actually really sad because she's my last grandparent and I've lost her. Um, and I had a deep connection with both of my nans um, for different reasons. Um, when I was born, they brought me up because my mum was working mum. So she went to work and um, I kind of flitted between my two um, nans or I we call, like they have different names one's grand one's nan so I, I flitted between like nan and gran and um when i came back and put into my formative years again similar sort of thing i lent more on nan and gran for advice and practical things for my life rather than my mum because they were better placed to do that and um i used to go back every year and spend my birthdays so my birthday fell in um uh, school bank holiday week half term week and I would go back to London and spend those with my nan gran respectively and um, travel up there other times of the year as well with the family to spend time with them so they were they were big parts of my life so it was kind of a end of an era for me and my partner though um, he has never had grandparents in 30 years I have been with him they died when he was very young and he says like you know I find it strange he doesn't have grandparents so they kind of adopted he adopted my grandparents and um he finds it strange that I still have grandparents. <laughs> it's, it's strange how the world turns, isn't it? Anyway, so we had fairy moon water in here. You saw the moon pages. Um, so there's this lovely page here on how to make some fairy moon water. And um, correspondences and herbs and things that you want to use are here. You've got your new moon desires, intentions, and your full moon desires, intentions there. So we have the buck moon in July. And your financial budgets, as always. And then... Um, so pre-orders, things on pre-order. So Tara Prague came in. I think I've done a walkthrough of that so you can find that. Um, Silk Pouch came with Tara Prague that arrived. Unfinished Business arrived. Um, Tara Pools Moon, the Kickstarter from Libra Moon. Uh, the Carol who does the Serpent and Peacock decks. That one is because um, I backed the Kickstarter and as an agreement that um, I'm going to obviously want to share it on my channel, uh, she said that I could be one of the first ones to receive the deck. So that is um, in the post before the end of this week to me. So I'll have it a few days earlier than the rest of you who's backed it. So you were to get a sneaky peek at that one. Um, I ordered a tarot cloth and a tarot pouch. The tarot cloth has arrived. I've got that, which is one of the cards that were in the deck. So you get a sneak peek at one of the cards from the deck in the form of a tarot cloth. Um, and the pouch is in the post with the deck. Um, the William Blake tarot arrived. I ordered a flower oracle. That's here. And murder of crows. And I know I've done that one because I kind of did, I think, a three deck unboxing and flip through everything that I had um, with that. And then we're into August. So there we go, those ones. My weekly type spreads is, where is it? Not that one, that one, there we go. The Lament card remains with me at the moment from the upcoming Deviant Moon Oracle. I can't wait for this deck. Art is amazing. Anyway, so we were into July and my word for July is cycles. I don't think I've shown that before. Oh, I may have, I'm not sure. Anyway, so my cards for this month. Um, so we had the third house communication, just so we're aware from my true sidereal chart. Yep, I think that's right. Did my true time. Yeah. Um, Aquarius, collaborate, collaborate, 
And then we have Pisces for sensitize. And then I've got empathize, not burden, um, just as a, a thing there. So we have the eight of air, release clarity, see clearly and drop the illusions. I think I was seeing clearly at the start of that month. I couldn't have seen any clearer, clearer if I tried. Uh, I've got transformation, change. Here I've put in brackets my nan. Um, that was interesting. So this wasn't in my, when I did my spread originally. However, moving into this month, I did put that there. So I put that there. I did this. I wrote this probably a month before. So that's curious. I put try a fire ceremony, let go of burdens. Oh, wow. I'm only now reflecting back on this. So I didn't really pay too much attention. And at the time, at the end of July, when she died, I didn't come back and reflect on this because I actually needed to just take a little walk away, which is why I'm late coming back to you um, with my flip through. So I must have known something was going on. I can't think back now. Um, I know I had some bizarre dreams and I left some cards out to um, from... Uh, Rochelle's deck from Amethyst Ascension. So I'd left these out on my table to do and I never did get around to them past life and remembering. Um, another one, why this dream? I haven't done those, but they were here on the table. So that's how long it's been since I've been back in this room. <laughs> um, purification, cleanse, release, declutter, thought, word and deeds. Time for a physical declutter too. Yes, that is definitely, I need, I desperately need some boxes to start donating some stuff out for um, the charity shops because I have got too many lifetimes in this house that I need to shed. Um, knowledge, 34, the card knowledge. So life lessons bring knowledge to allow it to be taught to others from the things taught to you, to bring you to this point, cycles. And then that's where my word cycles came from. Decks, so I've got them down here. Medieval tarot, Baroque tarot, cosmic seed, oracle of place, mystic sketch tarot, vintage wisdom, oracle, the Baroque and Cosmic Seed were not planned. They were extras. Um, and from the word lament there, I've written down here. So sadness of loss and regrets is a hole that can never be filled. Seek out the fond memories and laughter or uh, to replace grief. I was having a very deep synchronistic start to my month without even knowing it. And um, it certainly didn't stick with me. That's what I mean. I don't come back to these after I've done it. Um, you're lucky when I come back to do my weekly end of weeks. But here we go. So I haven't written down what this is. So this should be the Mystic Sketch Tarot that I've used to do this. And obviously I've got my sticks in here. It's uh, slightly different because the picture's already on the page. So I've put my energy this way. So here's my energy, um, energy card there. And here's the Five of Wands. Um, I have actually written tensions, questions, choices, decisions, needing to find out how to meet the requirements. Then I've put do more of this. So we have the four of wands. Find a way to celebrate the small achievements and look for ways to stabilize your workload. Work with others and dot, dot, dot. I haven't completed my sentence. Do less of this. Don't keep it to yourself or feel the need to be in charge. Balance is always key in awkward situations. And here we have the four of coins, the queen of sword, king of swords, sorry, and temperance. And then my oracle card, which normally you would see sat up here, is down here. So my oracle card was sanctuary and centering came out. Um, so I put viewing work from a renewed sense of perspective will help in finding attuned choices ahead. Centering. Conserving valuable energy for where, when, and how it's most needed. And then for my reflections, three in a row and a kind of um, joint like spiel about what was going on here. So this week for me, um, having read all that out to you, so I might as well share the rest. <laughs> Learning to move forwards while figuring out how to manage the multitude of emotions. What is the best way to understand what's needed in the workplace to build on what you're doing? Help needed query. And I put requirement on moving into on call is to know what is next, planning and strategy. And that was with the Page of Cups. The, what? <laughs> um, I think that's supposed to be, it's a V. That's supposed to be the five of pentacles. <laughs> I love the fact that I put a Roman numeral in there and the um, emperor planning and strategy. In case you were wondering, <laughs> I do make myself laugh sometimes. Sorry, 
I crack myself up. Week ahead then, moving into second week of July, um, I have my energy release, focus yourself here, and then the oracle. Um, and here's my cycles. So find your full stop. Not all cycles are meant to be repeated. I like that. I quite like that. Feeling profound. And re my reflections. So um, I didn't have a sticker because that was an extra card in the deck. So I now know that that was the... I'm presuming that was the Cosmic Seed change card. Mm, must be. I can't think of what else that is. I've not just not written it down. So okay, there we go. Um, following week, we have released this. Um, important focus. Do this for fun. <laughs> and try this for creativity. Now, the reason why that one changed is now I'm looking and reading the top is because I had a week off. So this was my week off, um, 15th to 19th of July. So um, slightly different prompts with some Oracle there. And we had um, release this seven of cups. So choices, illusions, wishes, you know, over um, spending the NGs for the important focus, two of swords. So um, those indecisions, difficult choices that need to be made. Um, so things that you have to do while you're on your week off, because it's not all about fun. Um, and then we have the um, do this for fun, I've got the Eight of Cups, higher purpose, shift, transition. So it's really seeking the inner source of truth um, and knowing when you're walking away from stuff, you know, like the BS that you might have around you, um, things that just aren't giving me fun on my week off. Like what do I, you know, I want less of this. Um, and more of this. So for fun, I can walk away from a bad situation, to be fair. I don't have to stay there because it's not giving me any, I'm not having anything, any enjoyment out of it. It's not worth my time. And then try this for creativity. I've got the moon and the four of swords, intuition, sacred space, retreat. So actually we we're coming into a moon phase. I do believe at that point. So I've just put like working with moon phases, shadow work can help to bring things to light um, because it had been a difficult month full stop. And that was a difficult start of the week. So I had so many things I had to check off and do um, as in like a working week off to complete like all the things I need for registration. And then for my Oracle cards, we have beauty and balance. They kind of talk for themselves. And I think just for the reflection, all I've done um, is I've written about it. So I've written... The wisdom is in the experiences, a week of necessary CPD, registration, eye appointments, doctor's appointments, trying to rest up where possible. Um, what does that say? S precious time. I don't know what that is. I can't read my own writing. Uh, precious time to remain in the moment and enjoy the flavors on my plate. So um, when I'm off, I like good food. And then we have the week ahead there. So um, time to reflect. So ending on the Friday and then Saturday is when my nan died. Um, so for my cycles, I've put cycles of life, the world keeps turning. Um, and then we've gone with energy, area of focus and shrug off or forget about it. Time to reflect on it, just three cards out and then um, my reflection. And then here, we have the week ahead. So last week, moving into the end of July into August. So it's 29th of July, ending on Friday, the 2nd of August. So energy, do this, forget this. Cycles, paint your past, joy will replace it. Just a reminder. And then my oracle there was dreams, which was actually the second week in a row to have that card come out. So I was clearly missing something for it to come out two weeks in a row. So I have written here, um, the world needs dreamers who do. So give your dream feet by turning it into a goal. Achieve the goal and make your dream reality. So that's a reminder for all of us. And then my direct reflection here. Um, and this was, again, slightly different. So what I did was I directly reflected on each prompt. So the energy, um, so I didn't pull a card, but the energy. So I've read the energy and then I've written down here the process, the prep, the report, the meetings I had to attend and um, findings I had to report with regards to um, my previous saying of authority of the establishment processes preparation is what presents performance okay um this is important the importance so we have the full the two of cups the star and the hanged one 
bring your prior knowledge and experience to the table. So absolutely request direction to enable a better reporting and questioning process from the master. And I've got a bit more rather there. For the um, not important, we have five of swords, queen of cups. It's not about trying to be impressive. Avoid the surrounding conflicts until it dies down. Try not to counsel at this time. It's too personal. Ego control already. No, ego centered already, as in, um, you know, when you're trying to counsel and it's not your place to be doing so. Not important. Facts are emotions. Oh, sorry, facts are emotionless. Too many emotional people taking offence at what's happening at the moment. So again, the whole thing went, um, oh, and then there was all the family crap. So what went down in this month? So we have the, um, so I did a past life exploration with three other lovely ladies, um, which I will link the video for our reflections down below but we did a past lives we called it the past lives club in the end and um, so we did some past life exploration that was with um aries witchcraft amethyst ascension and kerry's mystical musings and that was actually really interesting and a good thing to do for learning to explore further with the cards but it didn't finish until uh, monday this week so whatever day that was fifth 5th of August, so it did come slightly into August, um, but that was really good to do. Uh, we have Tarot Pools Moon on Kickstarter. That looks like a really good deck. Um, ow, Andrea Asti's Lenamond on Kickstarter. I've backed that. It looks amazing. I can't wait for it to come in. If it's still backable, go take a look if you're a Lenamond person. Um, the cards are in shape of coffins. I can't wait for it to come in. Um, his other Book of Shadows deck that I've got, um, which is the colourful one, the Alchemist Story, is one of my favourites, as many of you will be aware, for the colours, the brightness, the vividness. Um, so I can't wait to see this one. I don't use Lenormand very often. I don't really know how to read with it, but I'm looking forward to having it. Um, I'll have my week off. We had, um, I went for a fantastic meal at Ocean View, overlooking the Plymouth Harbour, uh, Plymouth Sound, sorry. Um, Started building the media, media centre in the front room. Um, flooring was continuing to be laid and work on the kitchen and other stuff was going on over there. Um, we had random hot days throughout the month and a really unusual, super humid, 96% humidity on one of the days. But it was 19 degrees, but my goodness, you could cut through the air with a knife. It was so thick. Um, I reduced my time on social media. So for those of you who haven't seen me around, specifically on my own channel probably, and other channels in chats, it's because I have reduced my time. Um, it's summertime. I want to be outside. I want to be having fresh air, um, even if it is only in my garden. And um, life is precious. So yeah, I have chosen to uh, treat myself. Um, watch some really good films. I haven't made many notes of them. Um, I have, you know, we had the uh, other important stuff to do, doctor's appointments and whatnot. Had some gorgeous decks coming from Dominic Murphy, and I have done a walkthrough of those, so I know they've been shown with the murder of crows. Um, and practical stuff was done that I had to do, but um, yeah, sadly, so we lost my nan. So there we go. There's my two main journals. Here we go for the digital. And I have rambled badly again, haven't I? I am just, I don't know if I'm on fire <laughs> or if it's really bad. I can, I can never quite tell. So we have my um, decanic walk. What are, we, what are we doing? What's going on with this? This is a very good question. So for cancer, I haven't added any more correspondences here, by the way. I have the Truce Idea or Astrology charts that came from... Um, I'm with this Ascension's Facebook group, which has just changed the name to something else. And I can't remember what it is, so do forgive me. <laughs> um, I'm sure she'll have a link on her channel, though. So Cancer 1, Cancer 2, we're done. Yeah, I'm sure I talked about those last time. So did I? Cancer 1, Cancer 2. Did I talk about Cancer 2? I used Tower of Prague to do Cancer 2, Deacon. And then for Cancer 3, um, I was a little bit late, so I got my world around me and what was going on here. For Cancer 3, I've used the William Blake Tarot. That actually worked really nicely um, and did a good spread. And then for coming into Leo, I haven't done my bit there, look. Um, world around me is here, and this is where I got to, so I'm, I'm behind. I didn't fancy doing any of this around Leo time last year either. So I don't know what planet moved where, what changed in the sky for these last two years. It's 
kind of consecutive. But I remember kind of not getting there. It was a struggle to get there last year. In fact, I think I stopped and at least I had like six weeks I had to catch up on when I got around to <laughs> picking up my decks again just to get this bit of my um, journal done. So that's where I am. So I haven't gone any further. I don't know what deacon I'm in now. I hope we're in Leo 3. I'm really not sure. I might have missed it already. Um, 22nd of August. Yeah, I think we're still in Deacon 3. So that's, that's a few. And then with my tarot journal... June, July. So we're here. So books-wise, um, Pocket FM app still going. The House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Mass. Um, audiobook, fantastic. Really enjoyed listening to that. Started reading the book of Irish Mammies. I haven't really got very far with that. It's a you know one that I'm kind of listening to. And um I was really reluctant to do this, but I've decided to just because I don't particularly like the person. <laughs> That's just no excuse to not at least listen to the book. Um, I've decided to listen to Davina McCall's book on um, kind of perimenopause, premenopause and menopause, just because, you know, we're around that age. And I think it's probably something that we ought to, in, it's invaluable information we should educate ourselves about, especially if you're having weird symptoms. Um, and I have just, yeah, I've decided to go ahead and listen to it regardless of my feelings about that particular person um, and it is I have to say halfway through listening it does have a lot of good information it does have a GP in the audiobook that pops in and out um, I'm not really one for agony aunt pages and there is a lot of that in this book combined with some really really good facts some really good GP information some really good insight and of course the experience that the author of the book has lived um, so those things I've been kind of like you know yeah um enjoying so i do recommend you pick that up if you're uh, coming into your 40s and you're not sure about some of your symptoms then i would recommend that you maybe um have a look at that one decks unlock your past lives oracle we had out we had out um i say that's a we um that's the one that I was using for the Past Lives Club with Amethyst Ascensions. Um, she has the deck. She did my spread. And then I um, did my background homework on the spread. Uh, we have the Tarot of Spirit by Pamela J. Pamela and J. Eakins. Um, I use Tabula Monday. We use Stretch, Relative Tarot, Rose TDL, Mashup and Shadowland Tarot. All in this journal, separate to the what was going on in my other journal. Those decks, I haven't brought them all out, though, because some of them you've seen time and time again. YouTube exploration. So if I just put this one here, um, I've just put 10 in for this month because I know I've normally got like 30 to 40 people in there. And as you can see, these are probably the most frequented channels this month um, with a few extras thrown in that I've had some really good stuff on. So Marlene Natre's Exploration of Signs, been enjoying her little series there. Amethyst Ascension, um, as you know. Um, she does a lot of videos, lots of flip throughs, walk throughs, shows some really interesting decks. So I do enjoy watching those. Peekaboo Rose, Three Girls, One Deck. That was really good fun. Um, I can't remember who. Was it Tegan? I can't remember who she interviewed now. But it was really cool because we were all joining in and talking about other decks and stuff because she like fires questions and you have to answer questions. Um, that was. No. Yes. Two things I watched, sorry. So I watched Three Girls, One Deck, and then I watched Julie at Peekaboo Rose do an interview with somebody who I think was Tegan at Cosmic Creepers. I think it was. And Lark and Legend, Logan. Two other channels, yes. That was quite good. That was really, in actually, it was not more than quite good. It was really enjoyable, entertaining. Um, Hermit's Cave Live, popped in for a couple of those to listen to. Um, fortunately, one of the last one I was in, I had to leave again because I got the phone call to say my nan died because they're Saturday nights. And I was just settling in for the evening with my glass of wine in hand. Um, Elemental Cartomancy, uh, Sip and Sling, managed to get to one of those this month. Um, feeding My Soul, so I did the VR to, I've got a deck for that to Feeding My Soul Angel. Um, that was quite fun to do. Uh, if you want to know more about me generally, then you'll find that one on my channel. 
Uh, Crescent Dreams Tarot, that was, um, watched a few good things on that channel. Moonflower Moments, I know I've put a few videos that I watched for that one. Um, Clementia's Cards and Quests, she's had a few really cool videos out lately as well. Um, and she's currently exploring dice through a free ebook that came from another channel. Can't remember which one, but um, I've got that saved in my list to watch. I was just curious to see what she's doing with dice. And Bohemian Rose Tarot. Now then, chakra energy healing spreads still going. So we did third eye energy chakra. That's what I used um, Tower of the Spirit for. Is that the only one I did? I think it might be. And then I did my past lives spread. So this is um, screenshots of the cards that were pulled. And what we did was, oh, I don't need to um, edit anything. So we did the identity, the time frame, location, faith, love, trauma, death, and lesson of the person. And that was my rough notes that I made while I was going through it. And I'm going to do a bigger video on this. So I did my rough notes here. And then for each heading topic that I've just read out to you, and my main card was Femme Fatale, which I popped in the angel there. So for each, um, this is some research that I did. So for each thing, identity, there were some questions here, and then um, I pulled out some cards to go with the questions and did a little background spread time frame and location. I haven't done anything on because I already knew the answers, so it was like I just didn't see the point in doing, the, doing those. And then, as you can see, I carried on with my headings and listings, and I've got them all in here with my lesson. And I've left a page there so I can do my reflections. Um, uh, there we go, I've got a deck for that. And then we're into August. Um, so a few, a few things I still need to do for the August there. And a few pages ready to go for um, spreads. Right. Oof. I say, let's get to the exciting stuff already, eh? Um, right. Oracle of Place, uh, Etsy deck. Not very expensive. I was using this one as a daily pull with the Medieval Scapini. No, I've not really like set myself up very well, have I today? It's because I've got a migraine. I've had it for about three days. It's just not, just not having it. So really, what I was doing was one of these each day, and these were the words that was appearing in my um, journal. So bank, and then anything that came off there that I wanted to use. So here we have two of swords with bank, um, financial institution, savings, and investing, loan, and credit. So if I didn't want to know any of that, it may be just that word, or if I didn't want to know that word, i will take what I wanted out of here. So it was really more intuitively led um, for what I wanted to do. Seven of Wands with within the vehicle. Seven of Coins at the library. Book collections, reading nooks, research resources. So I think that's quite interesting, like when you get to research resources with your Seven of Coins. Um, the... A strength card with cinema, silver screen theatre, movie night, film festival. Um, because sometimes with a strength card, you get that feeling of empowerment or power or being in power or being centre stage. Um, sometimes because it makes me think of Leo all the time. Leo, star sign, wanting to be centre stage. Cinema. Can you see where my brain's going? <laughs> Does yours work like mine? Um Ace of Wands with Street, Urban Landscape. Four of Coins with Damp and Rainy Realm. We've almost got one, two, three, four main mushrooms on there. So Moisture Abounds with Serenity, Drizzly Delight. And then Seven of Cups with Rigid, Frigid Realm with our Seven of Cups. Um, Icy Wilderness, Arctic Wonders, Polar Extremes. We can see there's a lot of water in this card anyway. That's quite interesting, like reflection. So that was those two. And then I changed this deck. Um, I stopped feeling it. And, uh, I did wonder myself, then was I having my own form of tarot burnout? And popped onto the Baroque tarot. I do like this deck a lot. There are so many gorgeous decks out and about that look a bit like this. Um, but because they cost so much for me to get in, like I would love to have um, um, Cara 
Moonlit Maiden. I think is her tone name. Her Huntress deck. Very nice indeed. So High Priestess Frigid Realms. Um, Ten of Pentacles. Nightclub. Having fun. Here's our strength card with the bench, rest and relaxation, seating comfort, pause and ponder. I'd like the pause and ponder with those two. Uh, five of swords with our restaurant, culinary delight, celebration and dining at whose expense. The hermit, oh, hermit and church. Spiritual sanctuary, sacred architecture. They go really well together. I feel like I should stop there before I damage what we've got coming out. Um, and we've got drinks and beverages, pub food, taverns, traditions. So those were dailies. And then I stopped using this one and then I moved over to this one for my dailies. But I use this one on its own. Don't ask me why. This one got different treatment, but it did. So this one became daily on its own. So Tower of Cosmic Seed. It's just gorgeous artwork. Maybe that's why, perhaps because there's so much to see visually that I didn't need anything else around the deck to brighten up my table. So that was that one. I also use this as a, um, did I say daily? Weekly. I also used it as a weekly. And I'm, just, I'm trying to lay my cards out as I use them now, rather than the way that everyone else seems to be doing, just for show. <laughs> I'm trying to show them so that they make sense, as in how you'd have seen them appear for me. So three three cards together. I think in a line, these are just beautiful. And although this is sepia and not quite this, it just worked really nicely. So it's the keyword really, that I was just going with. I wasn't really reading the book for these. Um, so five of swords with our page of coins and the world card and then we have surrender so you've almost got that like taking flight butterfly-esque happening here you've got the orbs happening um and color wise they sort of go really beautifully um, but i think i only did one week with these so our six of cups Six of Coins, Ten of Swords, and Faith. Keep the faith. So that was that one. Now I did do a week with the Baroque Tarot as well. And I think you don't need to be a genius to understand that that's going to look amazing because of the colour tones. So they already, yeah, you know, it just was a really nice kind of... Um, Pairing. So Nine of Swords, Page of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, Shadow Self. It's just a beautiful like moment to pause, reflect and read, I think. Um, Queen of Cups, Eight of Pentacles, Queen of Swords and Freedom. And isn't that cool? Like they're like bookends on the end of the Eight of Pentacles, like two bookends popping up the Eight of Pentacles with the freedom. It's almost like they're giving you the freedom to do, create, to master this. So we'll protect you, give you the freedom to do what you need to do whilst you learn how to become more. Uh, three of Wands, the Fool, the Empress, and Strength. So I think you can see why. Um, this deck, I know Martin at Martin's Musings has recently um, been raving about it. I've had it for a while, a long while. I've always liked it. Um, so it's nice to hear somebody else giving it some love as well lately. And then we have the Mystic Sketch Tarot from Etsy by James Bradshaw. Uh, did I mention before? So this deck came with a misprint on one of the cards for the cups. So we had uh, the King of Cups. The name was wrong on the card. So we had a knight and a king, and they both had the same wording on the bottom. And what happened is um, the few of us that did get the incorrect named cards we got a reprint sent out in the post, so we have the correct card now in our decks. So I now have a super rare version with an extra card for a misprint. So I love the fact that um, he just sorted it all out, gave me a message to say, he's really sorry, I hadn't noticed it, and um, posted it out to me. I was just like, thank you. 
Uh, didn't even want the money for postage, given how cheap this deck was anyway. Um, I don't think he made any money out of this deck, to be fair. Um, but yeah, so if you want it, it's really cheap, go get it. Uh, I know he only had 50 printed in the first run. Oh, I don't know if there'll be a second run or a change to the deck. Cavalier de Denyers, there we go. Um, so, as you see, it's a Marseille deck, all hand-drawn, but it works really well with this on the end, I think. It's, it's sort of got that oldie worldy feel to it. Talk of the coins, there he is, Roy de Denyers. So, um, star, king of pentacles, temperance, and healing. And she's got to look like she happens to have two bottles of potion either side of her with pearls flowing around her. So... Um, again, very synchronistic. Three of Swords, Seven of Swords, King of Batons, Wands, and Sanctuary. So, there you go, so that's the Mystic Sketch. I did start edging this, for anyone that was wondering. Um, I've mixed the cards in, I don't even think that I can work out where that work, which ones I've edged, or did I edge the whole deck in the end? Maybe I did get to edge the whole deck. Must have done. I must have got around to edging the whole thing in a very pale grey, just so that you couldn't see dirty fingerprints on it from the white. Yeah, I have edged the whole thing. So that's something. Right, so that was those. What came in that excited me then? So... Um, few new things came in. When my nan died, I placed an order um, with this little company here, Modo. Um, I decided I wanted some Mindful Moments candles. And you can do this with birthday candles and things, but I wanted a candle to burn for a kind of set period of time. So these little um, wax candles that have been hand handmade, you just pop them in a little, on a little pot burn it down, let it burn down, and this is what I'll sit with. So I bought these specifically for um, being mindful for the time being when it comes to um, remembering my grandparents and things. So I bought it to try and channel my energy and pain so that it doesn't react and come out in other ways because I don't deal with death very well. So I've got these to help me through that, hopefully. Um, and the funeral and things because trust me I would rather run a mile than go to a funeral I get very claustrophobic and start to have panic attack when they shut the doors and things I don't know why that's really weird um but yeah so I'm trying to set myself because it's the 20th so it's coming um so started this book Irish Mammies which is hilarious because uh Nan is Irish um who's passed away and her cough she doesn't like being the center of attention um but her coffin my uncles have picked an emerald green coffin for her. Now, I don't think she's asked for an emerald green coffin. They've picked it. I, I think it's very funny. I, th I can see the irony in there, but I can also see that she wouldn't be quite so impressed being centre of attention in a in an emerald green coffin. I'm sure it's going to be very beautiful and tasteful and there's, um, the flowers will be in shapes of shamrocks and things. And we are all wearing colours of the um, Irish flag. Um, I'll be wearing a green top with some pink embroidery and beading on it, uh, along with, you know, black trousers. Um, and so lots of us, I think, are going for green. One of my sisters is going for the full colour lot. She's going for all three colours, so I'll be interested to see how she manages it. But it's funny that I did actually start that book as well at the start of the month, um, and just the how that led into the outcomes. So... These are in a walkthrough, so you can find those from Dominic Murphy. I'm not going to open them up and flip through them. This is the cloth for the Tarot of Paul's Moon. And this is one of the death cards. I believe there's two or three death cards in this deck. Um, slightly different artwork to what we've seen before. I think this one runs on a more religious aspect, but you know, you'll get to see it very soon when it comes through in the post. It's on cotton, and um, yes, yeah, so it's got some instructions there. And I think it's just, well, it's so me, and um, it's beautiful. So you could put that up into a picture frame actually. 
the only thing that's missing is the tops of their heads. So I don't quite know how that would work for me, but it would have been nice to pop that one in a picture frame. But again, you're missing a bit on the bottom as well. So I guess there's maybe a story around each one. So I don't know if I've already got all these stories or if the stories are different in every picture around the frame. But I just thought it was really cool. I love the fact that they're in a big circle in the middle. I'm having a, having a wee dance. So yeah, that's that one. So look out because there will be, you know, there's going to be a walkthrough of that deck. And um, she's also created a beast deck, Oracle, to go with these decks. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. And then I had um, MJ Cullinan's Unfinished Business uh, second edition. I've stuck that in there so it doesn't fall out. Um, so I had this one. I don't know if I walked through this one or not, or if I just started playing with it and using it. So um, I don't use the book. I'm not going to read the book. I've had stories about the stories in the book, so I don't need to know about the book. This is just simply, I think, pick this up and read with it. Um, because if you don't like... So the stories about the cards, so the dead people in the cards with the unfinished business, hence the bride here with the, you know, um, suitcase. If the story doesn't resonate with you, I think it could ruin your ability to use the card, see through the card and read with the card. Um, that's just my take on what I've heard. If you do like a good ghost story and you don't mind it being completely made up, completely fictional and nonsensical, go ahead and read the book. So that's where I'm sat with that. I wouldn't use the information in the book to read with the card. Um, but I do like the way these cards are. I like the story in the card, the picture that you can see. So it's almost like, you know, standing up against the war that's coming, trying to change with the strength card. So, you know, up against something powerful, but a very different form of strength. The Knight of Swords here. So, Eight of Wands, diving off a cliff. Probably heading for the rocks. So, yeah, they're out in the fields doing duties. The card speaks, doesn't it? Like, what happened? Did somebody come home or did a bomb drop on her? Nine of Swords. Again. Make your own interpretations. Page of Wands, Young Doctor. Three of Wands. So the horse is alive, but the rider's died. Here we have a Nine of Wands with a nurse there, look. Head in the hands. So, yeah. Ace of Cups. I love the heart. So that deck. That deck, that deck arrived. Um, the only times I've used it is to throw out just randoms on the desk because I had it in the kitchen. So I just used it to like chuck out spreads as I was going. The William Blake, Blake Tarot by uh, Ed Byrne. So this, it's this one. I know people don't like it because people don't like having to work out what's what. And what did I do I, in the book? Ah. So the creative process is cups, the science is swords, the music is wands, and the poetry is pentacles. So I put my symbols there. This, these outside symbols were already there, but I put my symbols for the soups there. I haven't put them on the cards yet, because I was just um, thinking that I might just copy that bit out, which I do a lot of the time, and I usually stick it somewhere or, you know, like here, so I can read it um, easily when I'm working with the deck. It's just something that I do, what I've probably never really talked about doing before. Um, but I do love the artwork in this deck. Do you have this one? I just think it's really, really nice. I have William Blake's big book as well, or a big book. Not his personally, he didn't make the book. Somebody made the book with lots of his art and pages and put them into the book. So I do have like a larger book about the artwork. Um, 
and his poetry that he used to put around them as well. So, just the paintings. They have, they have something about them, a little touch of something. But yeah, so, as I say, I use this one to do a spread completely off the cuff. Just picked it up, ran the spread, and it worked. It ran, it worked really well on the spread. So, um, I've used it for one spread reading and that was good. I, I got a profound reading off that spread. So um, I was pleased with what the cards had to say to me. Not because they were in my favour, just because how how it felt like it resonated and how the spread went. So that was the that one. I also used this one again. So my mini Tabula Mundi with the... There we are, holographic backs. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, bring this one up. So, thought inspired, lovely artwork. Nina at Shuffle Tarot has a love of um, these ones. She's got a couple of videos on these. And. Amy at Mystic Rose Tarot also is doing a series where she's been using these as well. Um, talking about Deccans. And the energy of the month, kind of like energy readings, I want to call them. Um, although she may well have a completely different name for them. But yeah, I do enjoy watching those. Um, she has gone into far more deep dive with these because she's a, she's a Taurus. She's got the book out and everything. Got the t-shirt. <laughs> My lazy ass is just like really learning on her coattails, like waiting for her next video to come out, uh, listening to what she has to say and being like, oh yeah. <laughs> well, let me add that to my notebook. <laughs> my favorite way to learn is um, through the experience of others. Uh, yeah, so that one. And one other one that I did use while I was doing my um, past live spreads was this one. Um, I would like to do some kind of like dive in with the Beloved Dead deck as well from Carrie Paris because I have that one. Um, I've used it a couple of times for some paranormal readings and they have been quite profound but um, I'd like to maybe Perhaps let's just get the thing out and work through the deck guidebook for spreads and see what we get. Um, but yeah, so I thought that one would be cool to use because it's specifically for, isn't it, connecting to the beloved dead. But I don't know if it's going to work for a past life like type spread for me or if it's just to connect specifically to, you know, ancestors. Um, yeah, I guess that's something I can add to my to-do list, isn't it? So there we go. So those are some of the decks that I got to have fun with this month. Um, although I'm saying it's not a lot that I've done, it probably does feel a lot to a lot of you, but bear in mind that these are my standard practices. So I haven't done any moon spreads this month. I haven't done any uh, Wednesday wisdoms. I haven't done any um, weekend reflections. So just simply my week ahead with my reflections, Monday to Friday, my daily polls, and then spreads that I have thrown in randomly around. There we go. Right. Um, until the next one. I wish you all much love. Take care. Bye-bye.